Welcome back to Automation Airwaves. I'm your host, Scott Teeple. And back with me yet again, Kent. <laughs> Thanks for, for joining us. Thank you. Always uh, full of information and uh, some great insights for, for everyone. So we're talking about automation in the, the stall points, episode 12 of Security Concerns. Um, this one's, uh, I think, a little near and dear to our hearts as we've kind of lived in uh, some of these, not necessarily um, stalled us out, but uh, right. having a really great program around, uh, maybe how, how we avoided it. Um, but as we dig and dive right in, so let's define what security concerns and maybe what the stall point means to Agilify. Security concerns is, is I, t I, I tend to think of it kind of as a, as a phase two or a layer two item. And so you definitely don't think about it up front. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, uh, you know, I'm thinking about a use case that we ran across just recently where um, you know, a customer called and said, hey, uh, we've got to get some help uh, around how we... Uh, we run a release management, and you know our physical concerns of where a bot sit. And I'm, you know, I'm asking the question like, well, what happened? And they're like, well, you know, we jumped in, we do a proof of concept, we're doing all these other things that we're doing right, um, and uh, so our infosec guy walks by. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, what's that? That looks cool. And uh, sure enough, he's like, well, wait a minute, what what information is that showing on the screen? You know, all these things you don't think about up front. And, and those are things that you would normally have thought about in some of the earlier stall points that you refer to um, in some of the episodes, you know, around design authority and COE components. I mean, there's all sprinklings of security concerns mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. all those components. It's definitely an underlying kind of uh, infrastructure, if you will. We right? don't think about it when we're solutioning. Yeah. yeah. But it's very important from a holistic standpoint and from a compliance standpoint. Absolutely. Absolutely. So as, as we think through, and that was a great use case to kind of kick us off um, around how somebody may be in their program, right? Whether right. it's um, they're, they're a little more mature in their assessments um, and, and they they're maybe have 15, 20 bots, but maybe they haven't necessarily thought through. Uh, what are some of the, the triggers or some of the identifications that, hey, maybe I'm sitting in the, in the stall point? You know, I, I feel like I feel like a, the, the, the fire marshal that walks into the building, right? So you know, it's the first thing I want to say is where are your bots? Mm. You know, um, where are they physically located? Who has access to them? Do they have monitors? Do they have keyboards? Can we get the data? You know, all the GDPR requirement compliancy items that we need to make sure that we have embedded in our system have to be thought about. Um, and then you get into kind of uh, another layer where it's, you know, so what are the roles that are actually creating these processes? Um, you know, we've got a human worker that's doing the work, and now we have digital workers being asked you to do the work. You know, we know that the pr the uh, uh, the uh, provisioning needs to be somewhat mm -hmm. similar, similar, but, you know, how does that report up? You know, uh, how do we log what's actually happening? And then, of course, you also have uh, another layer even on top of that, which is how do we delineate what a developer can do and then what a production bot does, and that kind of rolls back into that release management, which is also part of that COE com you know, uh, kind of build out. So mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of different pieces to think about, there but is. they all kind of dovetail together. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the, the, the credentials themselves and the access that they right. have within the systems, and then how are those uh, credentials or passwords even protected and well, then used throughout the system? Well, and protected and used, and then also how do we acquire them? Mm. So if I'm a developer mm -hmm. on a process, how do I require, how do I acquire the proper credentials from a human worker that's doing it with the same access required. We've got to think through that. How do, how do they remote it and how do they do that in an encrypted, secure type of uh, setting so that I can't see those and I can definitively def defend the fact that I don't know what they are. Yeah, and this is the documentation around, that's right? And giving the, giving right. the security individuals, the InfoSec, right, the, the confidence right. Um, that these passwords are sitting there that, that they don't necessarily need to have within right. the system, but the bots do. So how do they really execute and, and, and have the confidence that these, these passwords aren't just floating around and that there's some some controls around that absolutely yeah and uh, just to layer one more piece on that you know your, your IT is going to have um, group policies already in effect within your organization that they've thought of that meet a lot of these com these requirements um, and so you want your bots to follow the same the same kind of philosophy mm -hmm. so you know it's really a lot easier conversation with the infosec guy shows up and says hey I, I'd like a meeting with you mm -hmm. to say by the way yeah we we've identified a lot of these things you might be asking let me show them to you out of the box rather than Oh, so what's your list of things I need to uh, defend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very different conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it really goes, I think, dives into a, a lot around, you know, where, where in your organization or, or in, an, in an IT organization, right, with, with software development lifecycle, where we've seen success, uh, where InfoSec uh, or, or security has alleviated and they have the documentation, right? There's, I think there's a lot of lessons learned that you can grab uh, in, in what has already been successful over, over the years. Your standard SDLC model yeah. is, is tried and true, right? We, we know it works. It's got all the, the, the turnstiles that you have to go through mm -hmm. and, and meet the requirements of. Mm -hmm. And so there's a very similar parallel mm -hmm. kind of path with, with automation, automation as well. Yeah, I think the stall point, you know, is, is one that really 
kind of brings into, and, and this is another stall point I think that we talked about earlier, but you know, it's, it's IT's involvement, right? Absolutely. Um, because they have this expertise, they've navigated through these, these pain points and they have the process that's in place, not necessarily the full blown process around how to get things, you know, into, into production. Um, but it could be, you know, one of those other, you know, leading indicators and in, in the other stall points around IT's involvement. Um, but if we're not doing that, then obviously security we're, concerns are... You know, we're on stall point 12. And yeah. I think I've heard that term thrown around in every single stall point is bringing IT in early, mm -hmm. making them a partner in your journey. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all things that they're going to think about that you may not think about when you're only focused on proof of concept and getting buy-in and, and mm -hmm. cultural adoption of automation. So you touched on maybe GDPR compliant. Uh, I'm going to throw you a curveball here, but what can you say, you know, that, that can help our, our user base who maybe is sitting here uh, in, in Kansas City or Indianapolis or Florida or something and saying, okay, GDPR, well, why, why does that concern me um, and, and why would I even need to start thinking about that within my program? Well, I, you know, at, with any application out there or any solution out there that, that has, you know, uh, the ability to store data. We have, we have to think about GDPR. We have to think about everybody's right, you know, to, you know, the right to, uh, for, for data to be forgotten, I guess, is the kind of clause yeah, that they Privacy, talk. right? You, privacy. Don't, you can't hold on to my data. Yeah. Right. And so there has to be a conversation that you have with IT and that with, you have to have with um, your business function that says, do I, do I want to, you know, how do, why do I want to go with these, with these uh, privileges? Do I want to make it a role-based privilege? Um, where I set up my uh, credentials and my access based off the role? Is it down to the individual? Um, do I want to, you know, how do I want to provision my assets or my uh, the physical machines and the access that they have access to on, on the back, back end and infrastructure within the organization? So, you know, there's all these different pieces that you have to ask yourself, okay, so how am I storing this data? Where is it being stored? For how long? Who has access to it? Um, uh, and can I prove the fact that it's been used and then forgotten? Mm -hmm. I guess along the way, mm -hmm. um, rather than being stored in some, some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. That's really great. So what advice would you give our, our viewers uh, on security concerns and how, <laughs> what's and the where's? Yeah, just not to discount it up front. You know, uh, when, when, you know, I, I said this in all of the stall points you've had me on, uh, it's one thing to do proof of concept and work through your technology needs and understand how automation is going to work for you and what benefits it's going to provide. Mm -hmm. But bringing the right partners and making sure that you're looking at a holistic approach, and we say this all the time, terms like ROM architecture, design authority, COE, they're all part of it. Making sure you understand that, hey, if you're buying the car, where do I put the gas? Mm -hmm. you know, how do I actually turn it on? I mean, there's a lot of components in this, not just picking a technology, not just installing mm -hmm. the application on your desktop and, and running with it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is an enterprise scalable solution, and we have to think about it a little bit, um, a, a lot more uh, uh, deep, deeper than something like, say, an you know, Microsoft Office product, which mm -hmm. I've used at an yeah, in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's really just having that holistic approach. Yeah, yeah. Technology is the easy part. Technology is <laughs> unfortunately, technology yeah, is it the is the easy part. part. It's the people part and it's the partner part that yeah, we have absolutely. to think about. Well, welcome coming uh, coming back in. Thank uh, you. It was another great conversation. So um, make sure you're uh, heading out to agilifyautomation.com. Um, and take the assessment uh, that we have out there. I think we, we've hit it every time, um, but it really is a great, uh, I think a starting point or a midpoint right. um, in, a, in a way to really judge yourself and seeing how you're, you're moving through the stall points and, and how you're moving forward. Um, so unleashing your human potential. Thank you.